Hey y'all, or to my former hunting buddies in Minnesota and Wisconsin, hey you guys. Check out this video. I'm going to tell you three really, really, really important things. You may already know them, you may not. Uh, for me, I don't really believe and have conviction about something until I really understand it and experience it. These are the hogs at my house. Acorns have been dropping for the last month. I feed these babies pecans, leftover from USDA rejected pecans. They're still delicious. They're like caviar to pigs. And we feed them expired produce from the local grocery store. We're talking really good stuff for pigs. But they have not touched them lately because of all these acorns. These pigs and this experience really drove this point home for me. I hope it will for you as well. The point is, wildlife, in particular deer, really love acorns. And when they start dropping, you can expect their patterns and their activity on your food plots to change. Go looking for the acorns. Alright, now for point number two of this video, and the absolute most important one in my opinion. We've watched enough hunting shows and read enough that we all probably know that you're supposed to give a deer a long time after a less than perfect shot. But does anybody know the real reason why? I mean, one could reason that pushing the deer hard right away would be best because it would make it exert itself and therefore die faster with some blood loss. Well, let me take you through my recent experience to help educate you as to why you need to give it time and some other things to look for when you're trailing a deer that wasn't hit perfect. That blood trail you've been watching starts at the edge of these winter peas. To the right, you'll see the blind and the disked ground in between that I just planted buck forage oats in. This is my best and favorite food plot and I finally got the right wind to hunt it. Crows came out and started eating from the oats I had just planted. I was literally reaching for a small game head for my bow to try to whack one of them when the deer popped out. I waited quite a while, told myself a ton of times, three inches high at 30 yards, three inches high at 30 yards. Well, when I finally went to shoot this nice doe, I put it right on the money and didn't adjust. The arrow dropped in low. I waited almost an hour, got to the edge of the wood, found a lot of nice red blood, a little bit of stomach contents. You saw all the blood from before, and now you're watching as I'm going through the woods crossing a creek, crossing swampy water, traveling 300 yards. I finally go back to the cabin a couple hours later. They get the ATV, go on the other side of the property, on the other side of the creek, resume tracking. Two hours later, 600 yards from the shot, I lost the trail and lost the deer. Now, I did wait an hour to start, and it was late September, so I had to keep pushing, in my opinion, to try and find the deer because if I gave it six or eight hours till the morning, chances are either coyotes would get it or the heat would spoil it. I wasn't hunting bone, it was a doe, so I really tried to recover the meat. But at the end of the day, it really drove home the lesson of letting it wait longer. Now it wasn't until I got back that I finally got the answer and researched it to find out that the reason these deer need the time in a less than perfect shot and my arrow dropped in low was because when you let it rest the blood travels to the organs and it can bleed out in its bed if you're pushing it and that deer is moving its body is telling it that its muscles need to work and need oxygen so it puts the blood in the muscles not where the wound is again let it sit let the blood go into those internal organs, process of digestion, and the lack of needing it in the muscles, and it can bleed out in its bed. Back to Tennessee. This deer was shot with the arrow you've been staring at for the last minute. Sorry about that. It's from a customer of mine for construction. They have way too many deer bugging their landscaping, and they wanted me to remove a bunch. This small antler, typical of our area, but big body buck, came in as I was putting the stand up. So tip number three that I'm going to share with you is just an easy method for raising the deer to make it easy to clean when you don't have your perfect setup. Speaking of perfect setup, this is mine at the cabin. Two winches with two remote controls. I have bungee to the ceiling to pull down easily. 
They are awesome and a great price from Northern Tool and Supply, especially with a coupon. So anyway, you see how I have both of the feet of this hog tethered to each individual winch? Pulling in an opposite direction like that allows the animal not to twist when I clean it. And when you finally cut the hams off the animal, they hang independently and they don't come flying off those game gambrels, you know, those bars with the things that hook through the bone and the tendon, which I used to use, but this is far superior. If you don't have two winches, do what I'm going to show you here. Um, so here's the Havoc in its fixed position when you shoot it. Uh, this headlock quiver is awesome. I have five little mounts I screw into the tree, stick this on there. This deer showed up so quick I was still getting in the stand. I shot this deer with the quiver still on the bow. Anyway, I'm filming right now to show you a quick little technique to get this deer hung up to make it easier to clean. Okay, so if you have your setup like I do at my cabin, that's one thing, but if you're on the go, a couple extra details can make it go a lot faster. Here I used wire, you can use rope as well, tie it tight around the ankles of the deer, come up to a rope, and then I took a board. It could be a stick from the woods. Make a little cut in the end so the wire stays in it on both ends. Then I went up to a pulley would be nice, but all I had was a little chain link. It's a little more friction, but it will work. Run that to the truck and lift the deer up. The wood will spread the legs, make it easy to clean. Whoa, don't go anywhere. I think you're gonna like the rest of this video. This is the rib cage from that deer I just shot. Look at the bottom right and the top left of the picture, that's the aortic artery, severed right in half by that Havoc broadhead by G5. The deer didn't go far and it didn't go fast. I consider being able to eat meat that I hunt, butcher, and prepare an incredible privilege I'm very thankful for. For me it's tradition to do that dish on the right. Steaks cooked in olive oil, salt and pepper, just like I did growing up in Wisconsin every year at deer camp. All right, so sometimes you'll wonder, what do you do with the shoulder that a bullet or an arrow passed through and kind of messed up the meat? Well, this is what I like to do with it. Of course, sometimes I grind it in a sausage or burger, but here we're making a pot roast. A bunch of vegetables and a little red wine is real delicious, kind of a French taste. Or I add beef bouillon to it, carrots, onions, celery, and potatoes. When it's all done, take the juice out, stir in a little cornstarch and water mix, or a roux with flour for a gravy. Delicious. The meat falls apart, you can put the gravy right over top of the potatoes. Oh, the kids love it, as do I. My kids like food that most kids like, pizza and ice cream included, but they've come to really appreciate venison and tasty venison at that. When I tell them we're cooking bacon wrapped, venison fillets on the grill. They, my wife and I, get excited. Here's a tasty dish my wife learned from her friend in Peru. It's pronounced Lomo Santado. It's a steak, some vegetables, we like to use peppers and onions, and then some tomatoes thrown in at the last minute, and french fries. Here you see sweet potato fries. Cook them in the oven, preferably a convection oven, but regardless, make them crispy. Toss it all together when you're done, it's delicious. Now the steak needs to be cooked very carefully so it's not dried out. I like to do it whole to start with and then slice it and then just saute it with the vegetables and a little bit of soy sauce, cumin, uh, any spice you really like, but soy sauce is the base. You're seeing the steaks after they have been baked and allowed to rest for several minutes. Here they're going to be sauteed with the vegetables after the vegetables have been mostly cooked. Going to put just a little more heat to make sure the meat's thoroughly cooked and to spread the juices all over. When it's done, we put these in a big stainless bowl. Just kind of toss it all together and serve it. We all know shot placement is very crucial. But humor me and listen to this. Maybe it'll give you a new perspective on it. This is a target that I was shooting at late at night to get some practice in low light conditions. Broadside shots, 
I'm aiming for that lung heart area like you always do right behind the leg slightly lower than middle of the deer anyway we talked about earlier in the video how I got in trouble I said three inches high at 30 yards three inches high at 30 yards over and over yet when it came down to it I believe my body just kinda did the thing I'm so used to doing and putting it right in the middle of the deer and I didn't adjust well in the same way when deer take angled shots away from us it's easy to think still shooting at that just behind the shoulder spot well my children are really anxious to shoot this year and I wanted to try to drill home making them think about where the vital organs are in the deer and making the bullet or arrow pass through rather than always aiming for that right behind the shoulder spot so check this out the kids and I sat down with some play-doh the other night we made this deer we hollowed out the inside and we made intestine stomach heart lungs and the aortic artery coming up off of the heart between the lungs near the spine do you think you got it the kids assignment was to use those toothpicks as an arrow and shoot the deer with in this case a quartering away shot and a little bit a quartering towards a shot it missed the lung look at it barely shaved the lung on the first try they did what a lot of us adults would do aim pretty close to that right behind the shoulder spot and with the angle it pretty much missed the vital organs quartering okay push it in a little further yeah uh -oh. let's see if it killed it look at yes. that no no, it went you through. You barely touched oh, the lungs. Man. It's like me. It kind of like... Can I try again? Okay. That illustration was all they needed. They got it now. Check this out. Hold the thing here and come straight in. Okay, push it straight through at that angle. Good. Okay, your turn. Oh. Your shot. Quartering towards you. Push it through. It's, it's, it, it's bumping. Oh, I pushed wheels in. Oops. Oh, there. <laughs> okay. Let's see how we did. Jaden, look. Yours is right here. It penetrated both lungs. And it missed the heart, but it got both lungs. Awesome shot. Will, yours penetrated through that lung and cut part of the heart. Now that we have the target understood, we're going to practice hitting that target. Just a couple days ago, I got to take my oldest daughter on her first deer hunt with me. It resulted in a real trophy. We didn't see any deer, but we didn't get mosquito bites. And you're looking at the trophy right there. Thanks for watching, everybody.